Hello. Today, I will be giving you a short demonstration of my project, CPU Simulation. This project is created by me, Shubham Said, and my partner, Arpit Jain. We are computer science second year students from college, Real Bajaj Institute of Technology. So, in this project, we will look inside CPU and see how a program runs and simulates through RAM and ROM. For this, we will be needing two tools, Assembler and CPU Emulator. These two tools can be downloaded from NAND to Tetris tools. Here, I have my Assembler. I have already downloaded Assembler and CPU Emulator from NAND to Tetris tools. In Assembler, we will be converting the assembly language to its equivalent binary language or machine language. So, let's see how it works. For that, we can load a program to check the working of assembler. I am taking a simple program of adding two numbers. Here we have a short program of adding two numbers. The numbers are 2 and 3. As you can see, the source file is loaded. Now the thing remaining is loading or converting source file to the destination file. We can do it step by step or we can do it continuously by doing fast forward. Let's do fast forward and see what happens. In fast forward, it is converting line by line the program to its equivalent binary code. We can see how assembler works. Now to see how a program is simulating, we need to open our CPU emulator and see it's working. Here we have our CPU emulator. In this, we will load our program in assembly language in ROM or we can change the language according to our need and then the program will be simulated and the output will be given in RAM. However, we will be shown what is happening inside an ALU. This is our ALU. To understand ALU better, we shall see the structure of CPU. Here we have a structure of CPU. It's quite a blur, but we can understand it. Here, we have our ALU, which is connected to one D register and one memory register. You can relate it with our ALU. See, we have a D register, D input, connected to ALU and memory register. Similarly, here, the program counter holds the address of next instruction as you all know and we have a RAM, we have a ROM and a register. So now it's easy to communicate between two, two things that is our ALU of CPU and our ALU of CPU emulator. Let us understand it more clearly by checking simulation of a program. Let's load the same program of addition of two numbers here to see how they are being simulated inside the CPU. The room is already loaded. Now we have to check how is it can be simulated. Program flow should be changed to program and data flow so that we can see how is animation happening and data is flowing from one place to another. Now I will be showing the speed of animation and doing the fast forward once again. Here you can see that 2 is being placed in address memory which will hold the number 2. Program counter will be shifted to 1 as we are moving to next instruction. Program counter will also move. You can see that ALU is taking its input. The D register has it input 0 and address register has put it input memory address. ALU has calculated the output and that has been put in the D register. Now another number that is 3 is going similarly into the ALU and put in address memory. Now the function that we have to perform here is of addition. So Addition will be performed in ALU and the task of ALU that you can see in the green region has been changed to B is equal to B plus A that is addition. Two numbers have been added by ALU and the output has been put and the 
output of summation 2 and 3 has been put to ALU's output. The only thing left is to put output back to the RAM so that CPU can give output to the user. So you can see the output has been put in the RAM and we have our final result. This was a quite easy program but now to understand simulation a bit more we need to move to a bit complex program. Let's take a program of some of four numbers in which four numbers will be added. Now as you can see the room has loaded the program of sum of four numbers. Well, we can only see the program in assembly language. To understand it more, first we need to say how it has come here. So this is our program. This we can clearly see that the program is none other than a simple assembly language program. Here you can see the I that has been replaced in our CPU emulator with address 16. And another change that you will notice is that the sum, the sum that we have in this program will be changed in CPU emulator with address 17. So in assembly language it gives address to every program so that you can understand it clearly and then simulate it. Similarly, you can see that here is the address 18. That address 18 has been given to the line N. And similarly for loop, we must be having one address here. So let's see how the simulation of this will be done. The commands are being taken from ROM to memory address and from D register to ALU input and the functions are being performed there. As you can see in RAM the output is shown at 16 and 17. So I have already told you that address 16 is for I and address 17 is for sum. Well, we cannot see what is exactly happening inside ALU, but the basic logic of addition, subtraction, and other functions can be seen here through our simulation animation. That has been made very easy to understand step by step how the program is being simulated. Well, this will take quite a while, so let's make it a little bit fast so that we can jump to our output soon. I hope you understand that the command JGT stands for jump similarly as JMP stands and it will check if the value is greater than D only then it will jump. Since we are having a program of addition so it will depend on how many numbers are there that many times the cycle of simulation will be running.
Knowing how to keep you stimulated was a difficult task before this, but now after seeing this, I hope everyone can know how RAM and ROM are connecting inside a CPU and how the commands are being stimulated inside a CPU. So basically, this project focuses and tar targets on how to show the simulation inside a CPU. How to look inside the CPU and tell how the commands are being simulated step by step. You can see that address 16 is 4, so the value of i is 4, and the address 17 is 6, that is the summation till now has been 6. You can see 1 plus 2 plus 3 sums up to 6, but when we will add 4 numbers, it should sum up to 10. So we will have to see that if the answer will be right or not. Oh, I think we got the right answer here. So it's quite a long task for CPU to do its simulation in this project but it's a just a matter of seconds in which CPU calculates the summation when we give it in our computer. Just because of this anim animation it is taking too long so that we can understand it clearly. So now, here we have got our answer at address 17, that is 10. When we add two numbers, that is 1, 2, 3 and 4, the sum is 10 and we have got the summation 10. Now as the last statement is jump, it will keep jumping since the number is less than our required number. So these were the two programs which could help you to understand CPU simulation. Just for understanding, I have one more program that is maximum of two numbers. Well, if you are aware of C language, you all must have done this program of maximum of two numbers in your C language or any other language, plus plus Java, Python, or any other. But in assembly language, you must be seeing this for the first time. So before we should hear a RAM. For clear understanding. Now, rather than showing the animation, let's do it directly as you all have known the procedure of animation. Let's fast forward it and see what happens. Well, here it is jumping between jump and 14. why this is happening. Now since we have seen that it was jumping between 14 and 0, the answer will be the answer. The answer to it is that you miss the output of RAM. That is we have the output in address memory already. Here the two numbers being compared were 10 and 14 and the maximum of 2 is 14 so we have got the maximum of 2 numbers 
well. Now, that was the last program program of the Tamil language that I wanted to share with you. Now, that was all that I wanted to give about this project. Now, the things that we learned from this project were how a CPU simulates inside it and using the attender we also came to know how assembly language program gets converted to binary language program line by line and to this we came to know that how the process that we have seen in long minutes has been reduced to microseconds inside CPU because of advancement of technology. So that is all for this project. Thank you.